today we're going to be looking at doing some 3D tracking with Brujo, then exporting your camera movement data to Cinema 4D, then creating some 3D objects within your scene, also using Cinema 4D, and lastly we're going to look at some compositing, um, doing some realistic shadows and reflections that actually interact with your scene. So we're going to start with Bujo. As you can see, I'm using Bujo version 5. Within Bujo, you're going to click the Import Sequence button. And I know a lot of people actually prefer to import a image sequence, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a normal MOV file. So locate your raw footage, open that, and it's going to show you a little preview of your movie. Just ensure that your start frame is correct and also your end frame. And then check your frame rate. My camera records at 25 frames a second. So select that and then click the OK button. This will load your footage into the Bujo program. And if you scrub through this, you can actually see that it will update your footage in the viewer. The next step is to track the features within the footage. So we're going to go to this button, Track Features. Open up this little window. And you're going to click on the advanced button. In this window, you're going to up the sensitivity to maximum. And you can leave all the other settings as default. What we're going to do is we're going to click start. Okay, this will start tracking points within your footage. And as you can see, this can take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back in a flash. What we're going to do next is we're going to solve the camera. So if you go to this button here, camera solve, it's going to open up a window, and the only thing you need to worry about here is the optimized camera path smoothness. That's just going to smooth out the camera movement for you. So you're going to tick that, and you're going to click start. That shouldn't take too long. Uh, let's give it a minute or so. Okay, that's done. What you're going to see is all these little dots within your footage. And if you want to test your track, just scrub through your footage and you should see that the dots are actually sticking to a 3D space within your footage. So as you can see there, they actually sticking quite nicely. So, you know, that's a good track. Okay, the next step we're going to do is to tell Bujo where the floor plane should be within our scene. So we're going to click on the button Scene Geometry. And what we're going to do here is we're going to click on the Add Coordinate from Hint button. First of all, we're going to do the Z axis. So we're going to select the Z axis. And then we need to select two track tracks or predictions so that it will actually know where the Z axis is. So within the scene, I'm going to click on one point and click on another point within that Z axis. Holding Command. And I'm going to go click Connect to select it. Now I'm going to do the same for the X axis. So I'm going to click on Add Coordinate from Hint button, and I'm going to select the X-axis. Then I'm going to select two points that's within the X-axis, so I'm going to select that point, and then let's maybe select that point holding Command. Then I'm going to click Connect to select it. I'm going to do Add Coordinate from Hint again. This time I'm going to select Origin, and I'm just going to select one of the middle points within my scene. Then I'm going to click Connect to select it. Next step is to click the Update Coordinate Frame button. And we can click Close. What you can do next is to add a test object to your scene, just to test the track. So we're going to click on this button here, Add Test Object. And that should be fine. So we can just close that. And if you scrub through your footage, you sh should see that that object is actually sticking to your scene. In 3D space. What you can also do is you can look at your scene in a 3D view. You click on the 3D button at the top and if you're holding shift you can orbit around your scene. Here you can also see your camera and if you scrub through you can see the camera movement. Let's go back to the 2D view. So the next step is to actually export our camera data. So we're going to go to export and we're going to go to export camera solve because we want to export the camera movement of the scene. 
I'm going to export it to Cinema 4D. So I'm going to select Cinema 4D here. Very important is to change the scale to 100. And also to give it a name, of course. So I'm going to browse. I'm just going to stick it on the desktop. And let's just call this Camera Track. Click Save and then click Save again. Shouldn't take too long. There you can see it's going and it's saved. Now we're ready to go over to Cinema 4D. So as you can see, I'm using Cinema 4D 11.5. And the first thing we're going to do is click on File, Open, and then we're going to select that export that we did from Bujo. So I'm going to select my camera track file, click Open. Very important, leave the scale at 10. Don't change it to 100. And then click OK. And what you can do, you can extend your frames. And if you scrub through, you're going to see your camera movement. Next step is to create a new material, so just double click in the material editor, double click on that material, and in the material editor you can untick the specular, we don't need that. On the color tab we're going to click on texture, load image, and we're going to select our raw footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the desktop, find the raw footage, and we're going to close that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a background object. So click on this icon here, select background, and we're going to drag that material onto the background object, like so. As you scrub through, you can actually see that the grid should be sticking to your um, raw footage. What we're going to do next is to create a floor. So click on this button here, select floor, and we're going to use the same material, the raw footage, drag it onto the floor. What we're going to do next is to select the projection and click on frontal. Then we want to right click on the floor, select the tags, and then click compositing. What you want to do here is tick this box, compositing background, and then also uncheck self-shadowing. So if you render your scene, you shouldn't be able to see anything. Okay, so now it's time to add some objects to our scene. I'm just going to add a simple cube. And I'm going to switch to the side view. And as we can see, the floor is there. So I'm going to move my cube up a little bit. So it's actually lying on top of the floor. So if we render our scene, we should only see the cube. Let's add some lights. Add a light, drag it up a bit, let's just move it over to the side a bit. And on the light settings, I'm going to enable shadows. I'm just going to select a soft shadow. Uh, let's just bring that uh, down the density to about 60%. If we render now, we should be able to see the shadows actually falling onto the the actual footage. What I want to do next is to add some scene reflection onto our object. So I've got an app on my iPhone, uh, it's called Photosynth. And with that app I actually created this panorama view of the surrounding scene. As you can see it's not 100% perfect but it will work fine for a reflection. So within Cinema 40 I'm going to create a new material open it up and let's just give it a color I'm going to give it a red color and then I'm going to go to reflection activate that click on the texture go to load image and I'm going to select that JPEG that I created with that app let's open that and I'm going to change the mix mode to multiply bring that strength down to about let's make it about 40 percent that should be fine close that and now we're going to drag that material onto our new object now if we render this you should be able to see the actual picture that's giving a reflection effect on that object and now it's time to render out the animation 
So let's go to render settings. I'm just going to run through some settings here with you guys. Um, on the output section, I'm just going to leave that at full HD and make sure your frame rate is correct. And the frame range, I'm going to select all frames because we want to do all the frames in animation. Next up, we're going to go to save and I'm going to specify a file name. On the desktop, let's just give this a name render and click save next up you're going to select your format i'm just going to use a quicktime movie and under the options i'm going to select my compression settings so i'm going to select apple prores 422 and you can also change your frame rate here to match the frame rate in the settings mine's 25 and click ok now we can close this and I'm going to select this button here to actually render out the full animation. And there we go. I'll be back after this. Okay, the render has been completed. So if I scrub through the footage here, you can see that the box is sticking nicely to the scene. And also the reflection is not looking too bad. Alright, thank you for watching my tutorial and if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer all of them. Thank you.